travel problem of the 1870s was where could the Victorian passengers place their toppers? The solution, on the ceiling, goes on show in a full-scale reproduction of the railway carriages in those days. It's part of an exhibition in London of 200 years of travel. Even the communication cord was on the outside. This was the horse bus which operated between towns and stations in the early 1900 and here's the coach which took the Royal Mail a century earlier. In 1829 came Britain's first omnibus to be followed some 30 years later by the famous knife boards, double deckers with open tops. They were tops too if you were a real fresh air fiend with enough agility to climb up a vertical ladder to get to your seat. Bigger, and in some cases run on petrol, were the buses which appeared at the beginning of the century, just a little later than the first charabang operated by the Northeastern Railway. Finally, the first of London's electric trams. Over now to Oystermouth in Wales, where the 150th anniversary of Mumbles Railway is celebrated with a put-back-the-clock pageant. Properly known as the Swansea and Mumbles Railway, it started in 1804 with a four-wheeled horse-drawn dandy. It was 70 years before steam traction was introduced and a further 50 years before electric trains appeared on this antique line. In its steam days, Mumbles Railway conveyed as many as 1,800 passengers in one train, a record for all time in Britain the oldest passenger railway in the world, it's still running on the right line.